but uh, okay. this is the more typical way that I, I do it with most students. Yeah. This works with 90% of the people. Okay. All right. So, uh, looks like you've done one. Yeah. I'm just not very good at the whole, like, discriminant thing. All right. So. What's the quadratic equation? Um, like AX squared? No, it's minus B plus okay. or minus the square root of B squared uh, minus 4AC all over 2A. Okay. Now, what's inside the radical is called the discriminant. Okay. B squared minus 4AC. Why does it have its own name? Because whether that's positive or negative is huge. If it's negative, we're only going to have imaginary solutions. Mm -hmm. If it's positive, we're going to have real solutions. And if it's exactly equal to zero, we're going to have exactly one real solution. Okay. So that's the reason we pay attention to the discriminant. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. you correctly uh, identified the discriminant here as zero, which mm -hmm. means you have exactly one solution. And notice that when you have exactly one solution, it only touches the x-axis at one spot. Uh-huh. And doesn't cross it. If it mm -hmm. would cross the x-axis, then you would have two real solutions. If it were to not touch the x-axis at all, that would be indicative of imaginary solutions. Okay. So you've got this right. It's real. It's rational. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know if it's rational? A rational number means it can be written as a fraction. That, oh, okay. That's rational, that's rational, that's rational, that is not. Okay. Okay. In other words, if you have to write the number as a non-repeating decimal, it's not rational. So all square roots are irrational if they do not produce a perfect whole number. In other words, square root of 4 is rational because that's equal to 2. Mm -hmm. But any square root that does not reduce to a perfect number, like square root of 5, irrational. Irrational. Okay. Any square root of a number is irrational unless it is a perfect square. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I get that. Okay. Well, when you look at the discriminant, you're doing the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So if that discriminant is not a perfect square number, you are going to have irrational roots. Oh. In this okay. case, it was a perfect uh, number, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in other words, the ra in other words, the, um, the part inside this is equal to zero. Uh -huh. So we had minus b over two a was our solution, and that is a rational number by definition. No matter what, okay. no matter what b is, no matter what a is. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm hearing a lot of background noise. Do you hear that? Um, no, not really. You don't? Let me turn my sound down. Maybe that's what's causing it. I noticed that a little bit yesterday it was like that. That, that actually is a lot better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Do we look at 11? Um, sure. Tell me what the discriminant is. Um, so it'd be, 
negative 4 squared minus 4 times 5 times 3. What is that number? Um, negative 46. Okay, so negative the, 44. the discriminant equals minus 44. So, that tells me a number of things about this graph. Is it going to cross okay. the x-axis? No. No, because it has only imaginary solutions. It's going to have two imaginary solutions. So circle the imaginary. Okay. Not rational. <laughs> Hold on a moment. So we're going to have 4 plus or minus the square root of minus 44 all divided by 10, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, so this, okay. So this let's simplify let's this. Simplify that. 4 plus or minus. minus. How can I simplify okay. square root of minus 44? Um, it would be 2 root um, 11? I. 2 root 11i. Well, so yeah. What it really is, let's just look at square root of negative 44 for a moment. Mm -hmm. Well, first thing I always do is take out the negative 1. Okay. In other words, if you do that as your first step, it'll make things a whole lot easier. Because mm -hmm. now that's, well, this part is your 2 root 11. Two root 11. This part is this I. Part is I. Mm -hmm. So that's the answer. So, that's so the answer. I'm going to replace this with 2 root 11i. Now can I simplify that any? Yes. Okay. In other words, I can divide top and bottom by 2. So it will be 2 plus or minus root 11i over 5. So that would be the solution. Uh, now, what exactly are they wanting here? Uh, um, the circle, graph it, and circle one of these, or multiple ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I circled imaginary and irrational. OK. I think that that's probably correct. Uh, I've never heard an imaginary number referred to as irrational. But okay. if you're talking about the coefficients of the imaginary number, the, the, the square root 11 is certainly irrational. So uh -huh. it might be proper to say that this is imaginary and irrational. It's just I'm, I'm not familiar with that. Um, okay. But that's, that's probably correct. What are these other things here? Equal, conjugates, unequal? Um, they are... You know what conjugate means? Um, it's... What's the conjugate of that? 2 minus root 11? Yeah. That's all conjugates are. If it's 2 plus 3i, the conjugate is 2 minus 3i. Okay. Okay? So you just change the sign in the middle. Okay. Now, in terms of graphing that. Well, my teacher said all you have to do is basically just put a sketch there of what the graph might look like. You don't have to actually graph it. Okay. Where is the vertex? Um, it's above the x-axis. Correct. Because it, it doesn't have any x-intercepts, we know, yeah. because it's got imaginary solutions. So it looks something like that. Yeah. But it would be nice to have a line of symmetry 
Remember the vertex or actually the line of symmetry is minus b over 2a, the first part of the quadratic formula. Mm -hmm. In this case, that would be 4 over 10. So at 2 fifths, we have a line of symmetry. We know it's above the x-axis, so it's something like that. Now, okay. We could figure out where the y-coordinate of that vertex is by doing what? Uh, plugging two-fifths into the equation. Yeah. And that might, I don't know how, how much, how accurate she wants this equation to be, but let's plug in two-fifths real quick. So this is 5 times 4 25ths minus 8 fifths plus 3. So that's 20 25ths minus 8 fifths, which is 32 25ths. So 20 25ths minus 32 is minus 12 25ths plus 3, which is 75 25ths. So we got 63 25ths. So the y coordinate of the vertex is close to 3. So okay. there's a pretty good approximation of that curve right there. Yeah. But I would think that she would want you to, to know the, the vertex, where it is. Okay. In order yeah. to graph. When she says draw a rough sketch, I, I'm interpreting that to mean that. Uh, maybe not even that much. In other words, maybe uh, just drawing this picture here is enough. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Kind of depends on your teacher. If I was the teacher, I would want to know where the vertex is. In okay. other words, if, if that's where it is, that's where it is. I don't care how thick or how skinny it is necessarily. But I want to know where the vertex is. Mm -hmm. All right. Is the sound acceptable for you? Yeah. Okay, good. What's the discriminant on this one? Um, negative 4 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 5, which is 16 plus 20, which is 36. So it's 6. Oh, no, the discriminant is 36, excuse me. Mm -hmm. OK. So real. real. Mm -hmm. Rational or irrational? Rational. Okay. What does the equal mean? Um, In fact, I don't know what these last three things are supposed to be used for. Um, oh, equal is... Hmm. I think equal is zero. Equal is, has to be if it's zero. Oh. And then unequal. Um, as long as you know what they mean, that's what's important. Okay. Okay. So how would we graph this approximately? It's worth noting that since this is rational, we can come up with the x-intercepts of this function. Okay. What are they? Um. Let's simplify this. This is 4 plus or minus 6 over 2. So what two numbers does that give you? Five and uh, 
Um, one. Minus one. Negative one. So it's four minus six is minus two divided by two. Oh. Okay, so if I was going to graph this, I know that it crosses the x axis at those two points. And I know and that I know pointing down. Pointing down. So mm -hmm. this one, I would think that would be sufficient for her without knowing the vertex. In other words, if she wants just a rough sketch, then, I don't know, I, I'm kind of guessing as to what she wants on the graph yeah. based on what you're telling me. So um, I could graph this much of it, knowing just the x-intercepts. Okay. Okay? And yeah. you see how I got those x-intercepts. Um, yes. Okay. Okay, what's the discriminant here? Um, 3 squared mm. minus... B, it's B squared. Oh, yeah, but B is 3. Oh, B, oh, so 8 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 5. What is that number? 124. Okay. So it's equal to 124 is the discriminant, which makes it what? Real. Rational. 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 Uh, rational. 124 means that it's going to be inside that radical sign. Oh. So if, the, that, yeah. if that is not a perfect square number, it's irrational automatically. Okay. Okay. Now, that yeah. would simplify to, let's see, 4 goes in there 31 times. So yeah. that would be 2 root 31. And that's what's irrational is that right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I don't know those three, so I won't worry about the rest of that. But in terms of graphing it, I know it is going to cross the x-axis. It is going to open up. So if we're looking for a rough sketch, what's the easiest thing to do? Find out where the vertex is? Probably. Okay. So, and to find out whether it's, we know it's below, in other words, it's somewhere down here, because that's the only way it can cross the x-axis. But even still, I'd like to know approximately where that is. So if we plug in 4 thirds into this, we get 3 times 4 thirds squared minus 8 times 4 thirds minus 5. What is that? 3 times 16 ninths minus 32 thirds minus Five. That's five and a third. So it's a third minus thirty-two thirds minus thirty-three thirds, which is minus eleven. Okay. So there's your sketch right there. That's got to be pretty accurate. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't know that these are the x-intercepts, so I'm guessing on those. But I know my vertex is at four thirds, comma minus eleven, 
And that's that's an awfully good point to know. If I only know yeah. one point on the thing. Mm -hmm. If the discriminant is a perfect square, and the coefficients are integers, what must be true about the roots? Mm -hmm. If the discriminant is a perfect square, like we had one that was 36, well, it's minus b plus or minus the square root of 36 over 2x. So if this is a perfect square, then we have, and, and the coefficients are integers, then we have an integer there. We have an integer here, and we have an integer there. So we have an integer plus or minus an integer divided by an integer. The roots are rational. Okay. And real. Okay. So one and three, F. Okay. Given that the discriminant is negative, what must be true about the roots? Um, it would be imaginary. Well, that's what I would say. And they don't say whether the discriminant is a perfect square negative or not. So this is where I've never heard this called imaginary and irrational. And mm -hmm. the fact that they don't say whether it's a perfect square or not means that's not the answer they're looking for. They're looking for imaginary. C. Okay. Now, if that discriminant was not a perfect square number, well then I suppose somebody could say, well, they're imaginary and irrational. But I'm not but sure that's really called an irrational problem. number. Okay. In other words, I don't know if square root of negative 3 is called irrational or not. <laughs> it's certainly mm -hmm. equal to the square root of 3i, and that coefficient is irrational. But I'm not sure that this number is referred to as an irrational number. And honestly, I don't, okay. think, I don't think it is, to be honest. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all. Okay. But given what they did not say in the question, in other words, if they really cared whether it was rational or irrational, they would have told us that it was a perfect square negative number. Okay. Not like they did in 14. 14, the discriminant is a perfect square. That means it has to be real and rational. Well, in 15, they didn't tell us that it was a perfect square, so that means they don't care. And if they don't care, then the only answer that makes sense is imaginary. Because okay. It could be rational or irrational in terms of the coefficient of i. Yeah, I see. Okay. Looks like yeah. 16 looks perfect. The the vertex is at 2 comma 5 right there. Mm -hmm. And how'd you get the other four points? Just plug in numbers? Yeah, I multiplied one third by one and three. Because that's the pattern for parabolas. Okay. Okay. The way I would have found the y-intercept was be plug in x of 0. So that would be minus 4 thirds plus 5. It's that number right there. Okay. Okay. And then we yeah. have a symmetrical number, the same thing, right over there. And in terms of getting those two points there, well, you could plug in 1 for x and 
solve it. Mm -hmm. All right, as long as you know how to do that, that yeah. looks correct to me. And then I had a question on the page from yesterday. Do you still have it? I do, I think. Okay. Is this it? I did finally get, get your email yesterday, and I realized <laughs> what was going on. You, I bet you sent it to David at Digital Math Tutor. Yes. Yeah. And that's actually not my primary email. That, uh, has, that has to be forwarded to my primary email, which is David Cowan 1949 at Gmail. And mm. I don't really care which one you send it to, uh, other than the fact that because the other one has to be forwarded, it takes a lot longer to get to me. Uh, so if it's like in real time and you want me to get it quickly, then send it to David Cowan 1949 at Gmail. Okay. Uh, as long as you're going to send it early like you did tonight, then it doesn't matter. I get it in plenty of time for our, our okay. session. Uh, so which one of these did you want to look at? Um, seven or eight. Okay. So, let's look at seven. All right. And it's supposed to be, there's a typo, it's supposed to be equals x. Yeah. Or, how about we do that? f of y. Okay. The function of y. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. what's the best way to find the vertex? Um, we could... Do negative b over 2a. Okay, that's as good a way as any. And it's good to know that that is just the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay. So minus b over 2a is equal to what? Negative 3. Okay, so the vertex is negative 3 comma what? Um, you have to plug in, yeah. So the vertex is 34, or rather minus 3 comma 34. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's the domain of this function? Wait, I got for the vertex, I got negative 20. I might have made a mistake in my arithmetic here. Let's see. When I plug in minus 3 squared, I get 9 times 3 is 27. Mm -hmm. That's 54. 27 minus 54, ah, is minus 27 plus 7, you're correct, minus 20, excuse me. Okay. Sometimes I go too fast. <laughs> me too. <laughs> okay, so the vertex is there, so let's do a rough graph of it. Minus 3 minus 20, we'll call it there. Is it open up or down? Up. What's the domain? Um, domain is all real numbers. What's the range? Um, all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 20. Yeah. And what else do they want here? It's zeros. Zeros, okay. How are we going to get it zero? Um, plug, plug in zero for y and zero for x. Well, plug in zero for that. I, I'm okay. not sure why they went out of their way to confuse you by making the variable y here. But 
you plug in zero for the function over here okay. and then solve it. Well, that means either we can factor it or if we can't factor it, we got to use the quadratic equation. Okay. Is that factorable? Yeah, you know, it looks like it is. No. No. Doesn't. Doesn't. In other words, plus 7 plus 1 would give you 22y in the middle. And if I made that 7 and that 1, it gives you 10y in the middle. So it's not factorable. So how do I get the answer? So I do the quadratic formula. Okay, plug it in for me. Um, okay, the opposite of the so negative 18 plus or minus the square root of 18 squared minus 4 times 3 times 7 all over 2, or no, time, all over 6. Okay. Simplify this. What is 18 squared? Do you have a calculator? Yeah, it's 324. And what is this? 12 times 7 is... 84. All over 6. So this becomes minus 18 plus or minus square root of 240? Yeah. Okay. Square root of 240 becomes what? Um, it equals, it's, um, you can't, I think 4 goes into it. Okay, if you don't know what the maximum perfect square number factor is, then mm -hmm. it never hurts to try one that you know for sure 4 goes into it. So it uh -huh. would be 2 root 60, but then root 60, yeah. you can break that down further. That's root 4 times root 15, so our answer is going to be 4 root 15. Okay. Okay. So 4 root 15, uh, and now what can I do to that thing? Um, you can divide everything by 2. So minus 9 plus or minus 2 root 15 over 3. So there yeah. are the zeros, and, and you understand that that is minus 9 plus 2 root 15 over 3 and minus 9 minus 2 root 15 okay, yeah. over 3. In other words, those are the two solutions for the zeros of this function. Normally, okay. it should be called x. Okay. I hate it when they put y in place of x because it doesn't matter what this variable is. That mm -hmm. variable can be x, it can be r, it can be t, it can be y, but it can't be the same as what's on the other side. So that's why uh -huh. this is a typo. In other words, most equations are given to you like this where the independent variable is x, the dependent variable is y. Well, here okay. they made the independent variable y, and the dependent variable is something else other than y. It's, we could call it f of y. It's mm -hmm. a function of y. All right. Okay, I'm not going to go past my time. I've already gone past it again. <laughs> I, that that was freaky yesterday. I rarely go that far past. That's <laughs> minutes late to my next appointment. So, all right, you good to go here? You have any final last questions? Um, what? How do you find the interval where the function is increasing and decreasing? Okay, if you're looking at quadratics like this, 
we are, then it's always going to be, in other words, if you have a parabola that looks like that, it's always decreasing to the vertex and then increasing. Oh, okay. If you have a parabola that looks like this, it's always increasing to the vertex and then it's always decreasing. Okay. So parabolas are, depending on which side of the vertex you're on and whether it opens up or down, that's how you figure it out. Okay, I see. You're one step away from calculus. <laughs> calculus, you figure out where it's increasing or decreasing by taking the first derivative of it. And when it's positive, it's increasing. When it's negative, it's decreasing. Okay. Okay. I don't yeah. know how long, how far away from calculus you are, but it looks like they're giving you some of the principles of calculus. Yeah. Good to go? Yes, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Ellen. You're welcome. Talk to you later. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.